Hello. Hello. On a nice Monday morning that is sunny. It's not warm or pleasant like that, but it That's is sunny. It's not terrible. It's not terrible, but it's it's not good enough for me. Okay, and your big old Burger King monster drink. All right, so today we're going to be talking about witchy and bitchy things. Witching and bitching. Witching and bitching. That's going to be the... And we're going to feature my new neck brace, which I'm going to try for the first time because I have a bad neck today. It looks like you, it's got like a hanging ball sack. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> It's purple and it's velvet. It's really pretty, actually. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to try oh, it. feel nice. We're going to try. See? It looked good on the little infomercial I watched. So, of course, I bought one, like a full. But, and what else do we got? We're oh, going to talk. We, our video is featuring the ceiling nipple. What? It's the ceiling nipple. Oh, my God. It does look like a boob. <laughs> All right, crow. All right. We're going to talk about the witch's pyramid. Because I have something to bitch about how I see that used and not used. I'm going to bitch. It's just my opinion, I will say. Just like an I know, opinion. Like I know there's the there's the definite generation gap between practicing. Me and pyramid. everybody else. <laughs> well, no, like just in, out in social media in general, it's a huge... There's videos all over the place on YouTube about it of young versus old witchcraft, new versus old. I know, so I'm I'm fighting changes. for the old. I'm I'm still fighting for the old, <laughs> and you're not really a moderny witchy girl either. No, I'm more of what. what the hell is that? I'm I'm cheating and I'm heating up the water. Oh, <laughs> all right. She's gonna show you tea in her cool little antique tea maker. We got some cool store stuff, which we, you know, got to show some of our cool little beloved store things. And what else were was, was we going to do? Uh, were you going to draw a card or something like yeah. that? Okay, we're going to draw a tarot card. So we got a busy, you know, probably two-part video coming up here. All right. So, what am I going to bitch about? The Witch's Pyramid. Yes, I'm going to bitch. This morning, I was flipping through my social media, and I saw someone had hexed and cursed someone with a death curse. Called a hex or a curse, whatever, but they called it a death curse. Which is... On behalf of someone who did not get justice in the justice system, so this is to enact justice. Which, okay, I'm not the judge of that. That's... I don't know about this. I don't know what was done to whom, or... You know, I am not the judge here, but here's where my opinion comes in. And I'm saying just my opinion of an old dumb crone who's a little bit fat. But I believe in the witch's pyramid. I understand that it was started way back when, when people were killed for witchcraft. And that's where it came into play, basically. And I always get this wrong. To, it, the witch's pyramid sounds like this. To know, that means know your shit. N know your craft and understand it. To will, put which your that means you have the ability to put your intent into it, to raise the energy, to infuse it with your intent. To dare, that means have the balls to do it because your belief in it is you believe it's right you believe it's the right thing to do in that moment for you or whomever you might be working in behalf for say or something and then the last word and the most important one to keep silent <laughs> god do you know I don't know how to edit shit like that out it just yeah you're a burpy thing the Coca-Cola. All right, so right in the most the poor part, you go and let a burp <laughs> keep fly. Keep silent. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to say here. To keep silent, and of course, to keep people kept silent because it could mean your death. You know, back, back, back. But it also 
when you blab, 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 after you do a big major working and you rose the energy and you infuse it with intent one that's as and you serious, sent it out there. Especially one that's as serious as a death curse yeah. or a death hex or anything. And then you're going to go blab about it? That weakens the working. And I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me. And it's okay. You're allowed to disagree. It's called America. Freedom of speech. Yeah, I know. It's a dying breed, but... But you're allowed to have an opinion, and that opinion is mine, that the witch's pyramid is something with, I don't think we should let go of, and we're hushy about workings and rituals that we do, because we want it to be strongest as, it, as strong as the moment we sent it out. We want it to stay strong. And talking about it, and... and it's one thing to teach and show someone how to do a spell like that but another thing to tell someone about yeah. your active working ritual situation that you have and if you're on. mentoring someone and you do a working with them or a ritual with them it's okay to talk about it amongst yourself because you you did it together it's your working it's your ritual but when you go on social media and you yappity yapper yap yaps world. to everybody you have not only cheapened it, in my opinion, but you've weakened the strength of the spell. If it was something important you put out and it's killing somebody, I mean, come on now. Uh, Anything involving death is a serious situation. Right. And really, personally also, I don't feel like I have the right to call for someone's death. I mean, they better have damn well, they have better have killed somebody for me to do that. You know, if you come after one of my family or hurt somebody I love or something, oh, yeah, you're going to get the witch in about zero to 60 seconds. But, but take how often does, like, do I do stuff like that? Huh. I'm trying to even think when I really do. It's hard because you raised me to think the same way, and I, I've seen it work for myself, so I, I know this from my own personal experience. You don't take karma into your own hands, like delivering karma to that person as an act of revenge because... Or at least not a, a knowingly, intentionally doing it. You could easily become the instrument of someone's karma, but yeah. it, you might not be the... Actively going out to do it because they de you feel like they deserve it. Right. And of course, it's different... With every situation, like if someone killed my family member, yeah, I'd I'd work with the Morgan. But that's serious. I mean, you're actively putting in energy that can be retracted right back at you. Right. And that can be death. And I know lots of people don't believe in the rule of three. They don't believe in... And for me, the rule of three is... That's not philosophy or witchcraft so much as it is science. Universe. It's freaking science. Three, seven... For every action, there is an equal or greater reaction. That's You throw a pebble in a lake, you see the energy of it hitting the lake going bigger, bigger, bigger. And you see the effect of the ripples. Right. From that impact of that So force. any in science says for any action, there is an equal or greater reaction. And that's basically what you're doing when you're working with energy. Energy is like a big push. You're putting, you put a push, you are creating a ripple in the timeline, in the dimension, the I don't know, the whatever, but. That's why when I, ever since I was in seventh grade, I always said, I'm going to go to California. I'm going to go to California. I'm going to end up in California. I know I'm going to go in California. And for years, I pushed that energy out, not knowing how the hell am I going to get in California, and sure shit, I end up in California. And she hated it. I hated it. <laughs> and that's karma. <laughs> I don't know why that happened, Ashley, but it did. I w it wasn't the California I wanted to go to, like, it was on the beach. smelly California. <laughs> no, it was the valley. Yeah. So. Well, different. it was the desert. California, but, va but different. A desert so. and a... And a military base and blah, blah, blah. a lot of things that you want so that's my bitchy bitchiness for now I guess I might think of something 
But that's how I feel about the Witch's Pyramid. I don't like to see it just tossed away or stomped on because I think it still has a lot of value today. And the reason I think so is because I don't think we're out of the woods yet and it, when it comes to uh, safety. We are seeing a lot of things going on, the power structure in the world today. There's people in high places that would like to see people like us dead. Still, they would. They, I won't mention any names, but people in high places that think people like us shouldn't exist. And they, if they could punish everybody who wasn't Christian, I think they would. So we're still in the dark times, if you ask me. We are not out of the woods yet. And therefore, we should still maybe tread lightly and be careful and look out for each other that way. Because bad stuff is still happening. And if... if a crime happens and you're implicated in the crime and say you didn't even have anything to do with it but if they find out you're non-christian in fact you're pagan which they automatically associate with satanic or something killing babies and little animals you're in trouble you might as well forget having any fairness come your way so if you ask me we're not out of the woods with that yet it's it's still very dangerous, and you still should beware. All right, I'm not going to rant anymore about that. Cause I could probably ramble on like an old lady about that. Are you going to carry that over here, like where we can look at it? It's really beautiful, and it looks really pretty with the steam coming up out of it. Should I move the camera? Yeah. I'm just going to give you a quick showy show of... How this looks but am I getting it yeah okay that's it it's uh, old-fashioned there's a tea light in the bottom there that's heating keeping the water warm and um, then what do you do Ashley do you just drop the tea ball in it yeah I can't find the tea ball so it, I know where the tea ball is where's the tea ball? in that drawer <laughs> that's where I put the tea ball always okay I'm probably giving everybody a headache but there it is, and then. I don't see it in here. Oh my God! Look, Wait a minute! I gotta put this back. Look out! Or I'll run over your. Oh my God! Well, then somebody moved it. Somebody took it. Cause I had it right in here. I think I'm just gonna use the fine strainer. Yeah, I don't see it in here. It's not where I put it, but I did wash it. And oh, it's okay. I'm maybe just gonna, it might be still in the strainer, maybe. I don't know. I'm just going to end up dumping it. Ooh. <laughs> All right, so that's the tea thing, and it's going to be making some tea right now as we sit here. And then, oh. Here, you can put all that over here. See, then she mixes up her loose leaf material, and God, they're gonna be so dizzy they need a dram of me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, you put the loose leaf stuff in there, and so I've got this is like my feel good blend that I like to do. Got some calendula, some chamomile. Let's see what else we got here. You got such cute little jars. I find. I got this one from Mountain Mountain Rose Herbs. They're five bucks for these recycled glass with the cork, which is really cool. I have to go buy more, but I have no more room for all of my herbs. So yeah, we're out, we not always running out of room here. Got to find a better storage situation, or wait till bigger space. But um, so I grew that. I do the chamomile. I got some lavender. Um, and these two just came from the dollar store. Yeah, and they're cute for dollar store. And these I just got for like $10, $10 for like 24 of them. Um, got some green tea. Got some ginger root. Because we're not completely out of the woods from cold and flu shit. So no, not at all. I like all. to keep the ginger to keep your sinuses open. And some valerin because... I have anxiety and it helps keep me cool. 
<laughs> and my favorite sugar for tea, which is beet sugar. There we have it. And it all goes into the what? The mortar and pestle. Which, by the way, we have no more of this kind of mortar and pestle. They are finally sold. Yeah, these are all gone, but we do have... Oop. We do have... What, two different other styles? Yes, we have a darker and a lighter. one with a pentacle on it that's black and one that's kind of earthen looking and kind of multicolored. And they're real nice. They're a little bit bigger, too. Oh, Valorant smells like feet. Oh, oh. Valorant is very, very stinky. It yeah. smells like it gross It smells feet. like a dirty butt. So I only put a little bit of that in because you don't want your entire tea smelling and... Tasting like feet. But. So I put. Ow! <laughs> Did you pinch yourself? It smacks down when you close it. So, like, pew. And then I put a little handful. About. Mm, what is that? This is ginger root. Oh, okay. Oh, I love ginger. Let me smell. Mm. That smells way better than feet. <laughs> way better. Or butt. So. Whenever you're mixing with a smelly, yucky herb, it's always good to complement it with other herbs that it can be mixed with. So we got the ginger, now we're going to do green tea. Ew, that one was gross. You're gross. I'm going to put a little more green tea because I like to use green tea as like my tea base. My base tea. Yeah, it's good for your... Immune system and your weight, your metabolism. So I'm just gonna kind of stir that around, kind of beat it up a little, and then I'm gonna put some chamomile. I always love the little flower buds of chamomile. I've been waiting to get some more. Jeez. I I've been wanting some jasmine flower and some other flower herbs for some teas and um it's all sold out on the website that i like to go get it from which is the mountain rose herbs because i just like the quality of their stuff good prices good much. prices and although you do kind of pay a little bit more for shipping but you get good decent product that you know is good and sometimes like especially if you're going to buy herbs and stuff off of Amazon you, you don't really know what you're getting or how yeah. old it is that's another thing how yeah, old is like, it what sometimes you're getting. you really don't could be know. on Amazon it could be really old stuff so I'm just going to kind of mix that up a little bit it looks very pretty So cute. Yeah, there we go. That There's works. That. And then I'm just gonna kinda dab with that in there. Uh huh. And I'm gonna take my cat cat thing. We have a, a real fine strainer. You could strain that through when you go to drink it. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. I'm going to strain it. Ooh, look at that. It looks very magical. There's just... There's no tequila in it. They're not midnight margaritas. But we got a purple neck brace and... Yeah, we still got my neck brace to go. Flour. I'm trying to stir it all up so my spoon comes off clean. That's as good as it's gonna get. Ooh, look how purple. <laughs> yeah, when Cody saw this, he was like, "Oh, that's have to have it." Yeah, you've turned him into a tea drinker big time. So that'll just sit right and brew. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna do the neck brace. This other, okay. So here's my neck brace. I found it on Oops. Instagram actually in one of those ads. You know, 
hit the shop now button, you know. I think even we get one of those over once in a while. But uh, it's purple, as you can see, and it's velvety. It's nice. And then you put it on. And I'm just going to put it on right here. You might have to help me a little bit. I've never tried this before, so I don't really know if it works. Ow! God dang it. Ugh, I just hurt myself worse. Can't win. Damn baby hair. Alright, this is just... Under turn. Shut up. Uh, where does this go? Like, like, oh, like this, right? Alright, so here we're on. It's on, right? Yes. Ooh. Let me fix <laughs> it. <laughs> it's already... Oh, God, it's claustrophobic. I hate things up around my neck. Alright, then after you get it on... Take your trusty take your scrotum. Balls, take, take your ball sack in hand. And, um... Here we go. Nothing's happening. I don't feel much yet. Oh, I feel a little bit now. It's getting there. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I feel my neck is stretching. Oh, yes. Is it, does it feel good or? Well, kind of. It's getting very tight now. All right. I'm going <laughs> to... Is anybody supposed to sit in this for any length of time, though? I mean, How yes. How long do they recommend doing it for? I don't even know. <laughs> I think I forgot to read the directions. <laughs> well, You're worse than it I did. don't feel like moving it, that's for sure. I mean, I feel like I'm sort of stuck here. <sighs> I'd like to swallow, but it's not very comfortable. I feel like the room is closing in on me. I'm trying to focus on my neck. Does my neck feel better or no? It hurts right behind my ear. Right, if I just try to relax a minute, like, ugh. Yeah, whatever. Remember to lessen it, you. <laughs> Okay, does that feel better? I'm going to say yes, but it's heinously uncomfortable as far as, like, functioning. Yes, I just want to rip it off. <laughs> <laughs> and I look like an idiot. Could you see me walking around like, uh, uh. I would never leave the house like this. I can't tell if it feels comfortable. If I tilt my head back, yeah, I'm it sure if you does. were in your chair, like lifted up and everything, where I don't had, know, I don't know what I think about it. I definitely wouldn't sleep in it with your. <sighs> I feel like I'm choking, though. Eh, get it off! I can't take it anymore. Mm, 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 mm. <sighs> All right. If I was suffering really bad, even worse than I am today, I might say yes, okay, maybe I'll stick that out. But it's like got to be really bad for me to be willing to do this. I don't think it works as good as it looked like it did in the little cartoon drawings and everything that they do. The little illustrations of how it pulls your neck apart and all that. Yeah, I'm not sure about that part. Oh well. I won't throw it away, but it's not going to be my go-to. Ice pack is my go-to. All right, so there's the neck. I don't even know what you call that, blow-up neck brace, or I don't know. It's your neck boo. <laughs> Did it, it looked funny, didn't it? It looked like a big old wrap-around neck boo. It looked like a goiter. <laughs> <laughs> a big old blow-up dicky. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looked like. All right, now, we can't not talk about some store stuff. Hello, crow. There you are, you little sneak. But we can't not talk about some store stuff because that's our favorite thing. We love our little store so much. 
So this week I was a busy little bee while everybody was working and I made the buffalo tooth necklace. It's a knotted necklace so it's nice and floppy. I like how you can just... Mm, I love the floppy. knotted. I love the knotted Yeah, one. knotted's my favorite. It's harder to do, more time consuming, but ooh, I love the smoky quartz on that. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. It's got smoky quartz. Uh, amber agate, crazy lace agate, and uh, it has a couple of those gold pieces of pyrite. Those are gold pyrite. That's the. That might be carnelian. I think it has some carnelian in there too. And it has smoky quartz and sunstone. Okay. And this is a uh, tree spot right here, which I love. All earthy stuff. It, um, which one's the amber agate? Uh, these, I can't, like these here, or, no wait, actually that right there is a piece of um, maroon obsidian. The amber agate is like right here, that is, that is, this is, see how the Good. line of the agate through it has like a line? These ones. That's amber agate. I the love orangey ones are carnelian. This part right here with the sunstone. Yeah. And the smoky quartz. I love the way that looks. With I think that's beads. red tiger's eye underneath it. Yeah, that's red tiger's eye. And this is India agate right here. This and this. So yeah, that's that. And uh, buffalo in animal totems means prayer. And, of course, prayer is used in meditation and all kinds of things. It's used in religions and such. But prayer is nothing more than telling the universe what your needs are. And it's quite a powerful tool. And we've all done it for years and years and years. We, we pray in one way or another. So that's what... Um, you're weird. That's what the buffalo tooth is about in totem animals is prayer for this. So I really love it. And then the next thing I made this week was the bear claw necklace. Which is a, a resin model. Of yeah, resin. it's not a real bear claw. It's illegal to use a real bear claw, and I would never want to do that anyway. Mm. I know, it's wiggling all around. But, yeah, it's see, it has trouble focusing. But, yeah, it's wrapped in there so that it's nice and snug. The tooth won't come out at all. You'd have to cut the wire to get that out. And it also has a lot of um, agate, uh, amber agate in it, and it has some gold stone in it, gold sandstone, and it has crazy lace agate, and a lot of crazy lace agate. These are sunstone, and then it has the um, smoky quartz, too. So, it's more of those and the findings on there are almost like antique -y looking. I really liked that, this right here. Boop, boop. I gotta put it in front of my face. Yeah, I like those. Those are pretty. They're kind of rare. I stumble oh. across stuff like that and I snag it. And then I have also switched over. These do not have clasps on them because they're slip over necklaces. I'm not going to give up making slip over necklaces, but I'm going to start making necklaces and bracelets that do have clasps. So I now have stuff in the store. This is like a little. Um, uh, butterfly. This piece was actually a commissioned piece, so that's for somebody else already. And but these are available in the store. This has the paw print. Hold still. See paw print. Oh my God! Come on, focus. There. And it's very pretty. It has alabaster and pyrite in it, and some. It has a few glass beads that are nice accent for it. So that's very cute. And then this is um. A wing charm and it's got um, pyrite, tree spot, jasper, uh, mucolite is in there. That's what I'm seeing. A lot of mucolite. But um, see the clasps on them. I put a charm on the clasp. And these are, they kind of look more dressy than the elastic bracelets. They have a more dressy look to them. And this one's. That's got an owl. Oh, yeah. That's got a lot of blue. <laughs> it's very blue. It's got um, 
blue jade and blue agate with two tree spots on the end there by the clasps. So I like the clasp style. I'm going to be doing a lot more of that. And it does produce a more uh, elegant looking dressy type um, bracelet. So that's that. So that's all we're going to look at as far as the store today. The last thing that we're going to do is um, Crow here is going to do some tarot cards. From the Oddities Oracle, which is a weird deck. I love this deck because it makes you have to do your own, use your own intuition with it. Your own interpretations. And yeah. Stuff. It does give you one word to kind of push you yeah. in that direction. But it's up to you to decide how that word pertains to you. Yeah. Like there's no guidebook or anything. And I feel like that's more. Yeah, they, I was always taught to try to not to use the guidebook. Oh, you know what else I forgot to say about the, is that the, bu yeah, the buffalo necklace also has bone, carved bone accents. I forgot to say that because I redid it to put those bone accents in there. Deer? Probably, probably. But the buffalo tooth is the real thing. That is not a cast or a whatever it was you called that. A resin cast. Yeah, it's not a resin thing. It's a real buffalo tooth. You can tell by feel you know, you can feel the enamel on it and everything. It's um it's the real deal. It came out of a real buffalo's mouth. Or, well there's several buffalo farms in Ohio that, you know, raise buffalo for buffalo. Part of it's getting used for a greater purpose. Well, and you might as well, if you've killed the animal, you might as well use everything. Right. So we're using it on that necklace, and it's gonna it's a powerful necklace. Mm -hmm. I, I nice like to just hold it. That's how I am about crystals, anyhow. I like to touch them. One more. One more. <laughs> I gotta feel the, the, the tingle. It's like a tingle I get. Like, I physically have to shiver. Cause it... She's got a tingler. <laughs> I don't know what that means. It just kind like, of said Like it. a turtle head poking? No! Because oh. that can be a tingler, too. <laughs> shush, you shush. <laughs> All right. There we go. What did you get? It's very colorful. It's something to do with chakras. The whole shindig. What does it say on there? Dharma. Dharma. Mm. Definitely chakra oriented. Maybe your was that upside down or right side up when you picked it? Mm. Oh. I bet you your chakras need lined up. Probably. After the week we've had, yeah, I bet you anything. That's you need some Reiki done on you, probably. Probably. Oh, I forgot to tell. Story time. Story time. Now oh, here we go. So. Almost a year ago today, a year, not today, but a year ago this month, or maybe it was next month. Wait, no, it was wait. this month. Oh, wait, please. You're going to look on the tick 